If you're shooting for top production in your crops, you need to feed that crop all through the season. Too often our nutrient programs focus on the early part of the year and don't focus enough on the late part of the year. So we're going to talk about evaluating your crop for its nutrient needs late in the season. One of the most important things you can do every year in every crop is some plant tissue analysis work. You need some data if you're going to make better decisions in terms of fertility. We want to find out is the fertility that's in your soil getting into your plant? Do you have enough fertility coming up into your plant? Are you getting to the critical levels you need to get to to achieve top yields? Without that data, you're not going to know. So what we suggest you do is tissue sample every week from the same spots in your field. If nothing else, let's say you've never done this before, we just want you to take at least a couple spots in maybe a couple different fields. Sample those spots separately all season long, at least for eight to 12 consecutive weeks. Pick the same day and the same time of day each week. So on our farm, that's 8 a.m. every Monday morning. We run out, pull tissue samples. That way we've got a database going seven days apart every single week through the season. And we can see the highs and lows. We can see if, oh boy, we're always low on potassium or we're always high on this nutrient or something like that. And then we can start making adjustments both for this year and also for next year. If you want to get the most data out of these tissue samples, we would also suggest using soil sampling right in those same spots so you know what's in the soil and what's getting into the plant. We'd also like to see yield maps. Now if you've got yield maps going back several years, uh, this will help you identify where the spots are to begin with that you may say, you know, this area has been a problem spot for five years for me. Let's figure it out this year. And, and if you get yield data, soils data, plant tissue data, you're going to be a long ways towards diagnosing what your challenge is in that spot and how you can best improve your yields. Now, the other thing is field evaluation itself. Let me put it to you this way though. If you're seeing visual issues, whether it's firing on the lower leaves, you see some yellowing on the upper leaves, whatever it is, you've already lost yield. So to go in and fix something for this year, yes, you can help it, but you can never recover the yield that you've already lost. We want this data before you see a visual issue. When you have a plant that's starting to run a little bit low on nitrogen, it'll show up on that tissue test first before you visually see, uh-oh, now my corn is yellow. That's what I'm getting at here then we've got a much better chance to help save our yield this year. But if nothing else, if you say, well, boy, I haven't done tissue tests, but I'm already out in my field, it looks yellow, it, does, it just looks terrible. All right, well, now do tissue tests, now do soil tests. Let's figure this out at least for next year. A couple other points that I've got with plant tissue testing, Brian made the comment of do it eight to 12 consecutive weeks out in a certain part in your field. The, the point is, if you stay with a consistent program, you can start to see trends. Let's just take, for example, uh, this week it doesn't rain. We go out and pull plant tissue tests and it says I'm short in quite a few things. Then next week we get a rain and all of a sudden it flushes a whole bunch of nutrients into our crop and it says, ooh, nutrient levels are good on everything. Well, if you just had those two tests, you'd be really confused, right? Or if you only had one of those tests, you may overreact and think, well, I'm short in something, but in all reality, it may just not have rained for a while. So when you do it over a period of weeks, you can sort that out really quickly. The other point I was going to make is if you're using tissue sampling to change things right now, let's just say it's a real critical time in your plant's life. You've just reached the reproductive stages. Yes, you can do it. You can say, wow, I am short in boron in my corn. I'm going to address it this year. Great. Uh, just make sure you work with your agronomist to find sources that are going to get right into the plant as quickly as possible. So we're normally talking about chelated products to try to get into the plant without being tied up. One of the comments Darren just made that I want to hit on a little bit more is he said, well, if you got rain, you'd have more nutrients flush in. I don't want you to use rain as an excuse. In other words, what I'm saying is if you're in a dry area of the country like we are, and sure, if I got a three inch rain in the middle of the growing season, which almost never happens, uh, it looks like I have more nutrients available. Realistically, you have to have higher nutrient levels in your soil because there's almost always some soil moisture to move some nutrients around. You have to look at what's a normal amount of movement versus what's an abnormal amount of movement. So again, that's why we want data and we want data quite often. Once a month, that's not cutting it. In my opinion, you're wasting your time. Do it every week, trust me. Just try this every week. Do it for the next three or four years, at least in a couple of fields. And you will become a big believer in plant tissue sampling. I know we certainly are, and so are the high yield farmers around the country. Well, when you watch the guys that are really successful and are raising yields significantly higher than the county average wherever they're at, 
they're watching these nutrient needs all the way through to the end of the season, not stopping at, well, I'm at tassel, now I'm done. Or, oh, my soybeans are flowering, now I'm done. No, you're not. The game is just beginning on your farm. So don't give up. Keep working on your crop later in the season. Now, we mentioned corn, soybeans, wheat, alfalfa, a number of different crops. Same strategy, every single crop. We want some soil tests. We want to pull some plant tissue samples in the same spots where we've soil tested. And again, you don't have to do tissue samples all across the field in grid pattern or anything else. At least take a couple of spots in a field, but pick spots where you have grid soil sample data or zone soil sample data. So then we can kind of start to correlate those two things. And certainly you can add some nutrients during the season, but let's just keep in mind, nutrients like phosphorus and potassium don't move well in soil. Whereas on the other hand, nutrients like nitrogen, sulfur, and boron move very well in soil. So those types of nutrients, yeah, you can add during the season, you can get them to go down to the roots, no problem. But P and K, that's where you've got to build up the soil more for the long term and more ahead of the season. It is really addictive once you start doing plant tissue tests in your field because you're going to get the data and now you can make decisions and not have to second guess yourself. You can say, wow, I have the data to support What's going on here? I have the data to understand why this area of my field is not yielding well. And uh, to one of Brian's comments, you don't have to use the excuse, well, it didn't rain enough for me, or well, it wasn't this, or it wasn't that with weather, things that you can't control. Let's focus on the things you can control because you can improve your yields. One of those things you can control is weeds. If you get out there and scout and use the right herbicide, we'll talk about which ones to use coming up later in the show.